morning. I see Tim. Good morning, Tim. I have changed locations again. I'm back in the office studio, sewing room, craft room. I really don't have a name for it. I always just call it the office. So I'm back in here. Hi, Alicia. Um, I was trying to give you guys a new scenery. So this morning I went out and did my rounds and I fed the animals. And I thought, let's sit on the back porch today and let me give the viewers this beautiful scenery with the flag, the, the American flag and the sun rising and the beauty of like our driveway. Well, I set everything up and it was beautiful, but I couldn't see my screen and it's a little windy. And then those dogs come running up the back porch and was just scuffling around and I thought, well, this isn't going to work. So I brought everything back in here. So here we are, guys. We are in uh, a good environment. So <laughs> we won't have distractions outside with the animals, with the wind, with the lighting. Because maybe with the sun coming up and it's shining toward the camera, it could have probably distorted the view. So good morning. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I wanted new scenery for you guys, but it's okay. We're good where we're at. Um, so if you got your coffee, you got whatever, you got your got your Bible. If you read along or want to read along on the screen, I'm back in here and I'm set up. But I gotta show you guys something. Oh, I'm excited about this. Um, we had friends come over a couple days ago, and they were gonna have Patrick work on their brakes. And um, <clears throat> he wasn't able to do it that day because uh, they couldn't get some off. Anyway, so we went over there yesterday morning so that he could try again. And they gave me water. Now, this isn't just any old water in a plain old water bottle. This water came from the Jordan River. I don't remember who they said brought it back, but he had it in a huge blue water bottle. So I was like, I wonder how they got that over here. Possibly they just scooped it up in their water bottle, put it in their luggage or put it in their whatever, and just brought it over. I don't know, but I got some. So now I'm gonna have to like label this so that nobody drinks it throws it away or pours it out so I'm like okay how can I I don't want to just put like Jordan River water on it I, I'm not really sure what I do yet but anyway I got me some water from the Jordan River and I'm excited about that so um I wanted to share that with you it's pretty neat um grabbing your tea okay grab your tea we're good I like tea I like all kinds of tea and we're just gonna dive in we're gonna pick up from where we left off yesterday and yesterday we talked about what the like false teachings doctrines of demons um, being careful on what we're led into or what like separating ourselves from God and thinking we can go our own way okay that's kind of what we're gonna pick up from so here we see um, the title of this a good servant of Christ Jesus but I named mine, Don't Waste Your Time. And we'll see why as we read along, okay? So here Paul is talking to Timothy. And he says, If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be worthy, be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. So Timothy, if you explain this, if you instruct your brothers and sisters in Christ in these things, in these teachings that I'm sharing with you as you grow in your faith. Um, it says, one who is nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. So we must continue to explain or instruct others around us, right? So instruction can be um, more than just like a teaching setting like this or a classroom setting um, or something like that. I believe it can be walked out. Like it can be displayed through the way like you 
um, live, the way you respond to some things, um, just your way of life and your character. I think you can teach others by them looking on the outside in on the way you live your life. So Jesus is the perfect example, is he not? He did do um, teachings. He did teach the people. He did stand before them and he did teach them. But he also walked out the things that he taught. So not only did he give them verbal instructions, he also displayed it through his actions, through the way he carried himself, and he lived his life here on earth, right? Um, he showed them what life was like walking with the Father, right? So I think that's a great example that if we aren't in a position of teaching people, we don't dismiss this because we are, in a way, teaching and instructing people due to the way that we live okay so I think that's kind of important do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives tales instead train yourself to be godly physical training is good but training for godliness is much better promising benefits in this life and in the life to come so we all know that we are storing treasures up in heaven right in this life right now but that shouldn't be like the reason that we do the things we do. The reason we do the things we do is because we love Jesus. We want to spread his love. We want to spread the gospel. We want to testify of all the things that he has done in our life to other people. So um, I feel like in these moments we need to just really stay focused on the word. Stay focused on Jesus who is the word and not get carried away with all of these different religious traditions on how to be godly and this is going to make you holy if you follow these instructions you will be holy that is not what Jesus taught so we can put our own physical effort into trying to be holy and godly and in a sense that's good but if that's what we're putting our faith in like all these things that I do make me holy um, we have missed the point I think the bait the basics the basis of our life should be our walk with Jesus okay that personal communication every day with Jesus that is what we should focus on um, so we wake up we find our focus we find Jesus right and we stay with him and whatever we do, we leave that, we keep that communication open. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. Okay. Um, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle, or I think some transcripts say suffer. For our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and particularly of all believers. So another thing is... Um, like physical endurance, people that train for you know athletics or things like that, you know they have a physical endurance, but they have to build that up, right? We know that we 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 understand that we understand what that means, but I think that a lot of us neglect our spiritual activity, I guess you could say, um, because we can be lazy in in our spiritual life and become idle. And when we do that, our relationship with Jesus starts lacking. So you have to maintain that relationship, just like you have to maintain a friendship or a marriage. You need to maintain that with the Lord. And that, again, wake up, where's your focus on, like, you dreading this day. Oh, my goodness, I'm dreading this day. I've been there. I understand that. But... After a little bit, I get out of that funk, and I'm like, Jesus, I'm sorry. I praise you for the day. I don't know what's ahead. I feel like today's going to be awful, but I know if I walk with you, it's going to be okay. And it may still turn out to be awful, but not inside, like in your spirit. You're at rest and you're at peace. Even though everything around you is crazy, how are you going to handle that? If you're walking with Jesus and you have that rest and peace inside, you're going to handle it a whole different way, okay? Um, so Jesus is the one that gives us our hope. He gives us our future and he gives us purpose. 
every day he gives us purpose. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. I love that. I love that because that's what we're doing. We're getting up every morning and we're reading the scriptures with each other. Um, we're growing in our faith. We are growing in our walk. And when I read that last part, I was like, okay, I'm just going to continue on. Then I'm going to focus on the scriptures every day. I'm going to focus on reading them with you guys. I'm going to focus on growing together as the body. Um, and maybe that encourages others to come in and join us. And we all can learn together. Good morning, Christy and Caitlin. Sorry, guys. I just looked over and I've seen some comments. So, good morning. Um, <clears throat> okay. So... Don't let your conditions like your age, maybe you're really young, maybe you're older and you feel like you've kind of done it and you're done. Don't let those conditions stop you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that could not only apply to a physical age, it could apply to a spiritual age. So maybe you're a new believer and you feel like you really don't have a voice yet because you really don't know the word do you have a testimony? Do you have something that you can share that Jesus has done for you? Can you not tell people what he pulled you from? So don't think that just because you are just a brand new believer, like you've only been saved a little while, that you don't have a voice because you do, because you have a testimony. And as you grow and you learn the word, God's going to give you opportunities to teach people the word through maybe something that you've walked through. Maybe you can testify of your faith, how he's increased your faith. I had to go through this, but now I'm here, and this is what happened. So don't think that you don't have a voice, because we all have a voice, and we all should be proclaiming the goodness of God, right? We should all be doing that. Right now, our life is not to the, to the outside. It's like... If you knew some of the details in our life right now, you'd be like, oh my goodness. Okay, so, but we're walking in faith. Um, we are getting through this COVID thing just like the rest of you. Um, and there have been hard days. And sometimes I feel like life's not fair. Because these people have all this stuff, Lord, but what about us? It's like your hope doesn't come from man or government. Your hope comes from Jesus. Trust that I'm going to take care of you and it's going to be okay. And we are facing a health issue in Patrick. And the doctor said, this is life-threatening. Like, this could take your life. We just heard that news last week. But through it all, how are we going to react to this? Are we going to, like, fall away because we feel like God is not taking care of us? Or are we going to stand in our faith that he's going to carry us through this next this next fiery trial and it's going to just increase our faith even more and he's going to have another great testimony of how God healed him. God healed him. So don't think that you don't have a voice. We all, all believers have a voice and should be proclaiming the goodness of God, the gospel, the word, Jesus Christ. So God speaks to us through his word. So as we read these scriptures together, God is speaking to you. It may be something totally different than from what I'm speaking from my heart. It may be something else. But let him continue to talk to you about that because it's for your life on how to apply, on, on how to grow and strengthen you spiritually. And every day we should strive for that, right? Um, it's not easy. We don't, Sometimes we don't want to wake up and we don't want to like start our day in prayer. Or we don't want to do this because we're running late for this. We've got to do this. All this other stuff. And I understand that because I'm trying to build my business. I'm trying to maintain our little farm here. And I'm trying to devote my, my time to my Lord and Savior. And let Him show me the best way. And sometimes I get wrapped up in my own self. I don't pray about things. I don't communicate with God. And I'm like, oh, I should have prayed about that first. But hindsight, right? <laughs> hindsight. Um... So it's important that we do we do stick with the word, even if it's just a scripture day. Maybe you have a daily verse that you 
comes to your phone, like a U version will send you a daily verse. Maybe it's the verse you need to get you through that day. Something to meditate on. Meditating on the word. Letting God speak to your very soul and spirit. That is the goodness of God. And he does speak today. A lot of people don't think he does. But he does. I know he does. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Hi, Jayton. Um, Christy says, hi, Kenzie, Jack, and Sue. So I'm saying hi, too. I only see comments. I don't see people coming on. So, so sorry if I missed you. Okay, so do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive through the prophecy spoken over you. What does God say about you? Um, meditate on the words that God has spoken over you. Individually, if there has been a prophecy spoken over you, meditate on it. If God has spoken something into your heart and He's given you a passion and a, and a desire... That is something he's placed inside of you. Meditate on that. Meditate on what God says about you. I know that seems, it's like, how do I do that? Okay, Father God, you've called me. You've chosen me. And I praise you for that. If that's where you can start, start there. Father, I thank you that you've anointed me to do whatever it is. I give myself to you, Father, and I thank you that I am blessed and I am highly favored. I receive it in Jesus' name. If that's all you can say, start there. And you know what happens when you start with just the little things that you call the blessings of God upon your life? Because He's already spoken it over you from the very beginning when you were created. Before your mother's womb, He spoke over you. So things will just start rolling out of your mouth. Things that you've never even thought of before. Because now he is speaking those words into your thoughts that come out your mouth and into your atmosphere. It is so important that we give him our voice to speak those things that he has spoken over us. And it just rolls out beautifully. And you're going to be like, ah, oh, that's so awesome. And you're going to want more of that. You're going to want a, more of that connection with the Lord. How He speaks over you through your own voice. I know that might sound crazy, but that has happened to me before when I just started rolling things out. When I started with the very basics. Thank you, Father God, that I'm chosen and I am called, Father. I thank you for the anointing that you have put on my life. That I have purpose. Father, I thank you, Lord, that I'm blessed and highly favored. And you continue that. And then you're just going to say things and it's going to amaze you and then meditate on what God spoke over you. So, um, I just, I don't even know why I said that. But anyway, I hope someone takes that, receives it and does that today. Um, do not neglect or throw away your talents. Okay, so many people we see today have given their talents over to Satan when God has given them such a great talent or a gift and they've chose the wrong road. To take their talent and gift right so whatever it is whatever he has put in you whatever creativeness that he has put in you don't neglect to give him the glory use it for him um, and sometimes we when we recognize something that he's given us to do we take the glory for it right and that's flesh and that just makes us feel good and then it's all about us and what we can do instead of father god i give this back to you i use my gift to worship you i use my gift and my talent to praise your holy name so we can't neglect our gifts and giving them back to the father so this last part um keep a close watch on how you live and your teaching Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Okay, so this little verse is so important too because realizing it, maybe you don't realize it, but others depend on you. Others depend on your spiritual guidance 
through the way you live. We've just talked about it. So you may have people watching you that you don't know are watching you. Maybe they're watching the things that you post, or maybe there's someone close to you and they're watching the way that you um, react to stuff or the way you speak, or they're watching you through a trial on how you handle it. Um, you never know. And so it's so important that we stay true to our faith. We stay true to the Word. We stay true to the Father through everything. And I understand how hard it is sometimes. And sometimes we do fail a little bit. And we give in to fear. And we give in to the doubt and the worry. And, and then you're like, what am I thinking? I know better than this. Um, but it's so, it's so important that we strive to live in faith no matter what and it, not being stupid in our faith I've said this before I hope it doesn't offend you but being stupid in our faith we have to um, um, if we need to go to the doctor go to the doctor but go to the doctor in faith that maybe this is the way God is going to heal you right if you're on medication don't just throw it away and then say okay God now I feel like maybe if he's told you to cut back or do something different, do it. Don't be stupid in it. Um, but we do have faith in everything that we do. Does that make sense? So we know Patrick is going to be healed. We know that. But we're going to go to his doctor's appointment and we're going to do what we can do. And even though man may fail us, we've walked this out before. God intervenes. He intervenes. So maybe Patrick doesn't have to have a surgery. Maybe God's going to heal him before that. But we're still going to go to the doctor. We're still going to pray. And we're still going to stand in our faith that, that God's got this and it's going to be okay. So um, another thing is sometimes um, believers, they fall into sin. They fall into tem to temptation and we give into our flesh. And sometimes that makes us fall away, right? fall away from the faith. I've messed up. The Lord isn't going to forgive me, so I'm just going to turn my back. Well, what if that someone is watching you on how you're going to handle that? And that causes them to stumble in some way instead of saying, Father God, I repent for what I've done. Father, I'm sorry. Father, um, help me to be stronger. Help, you know, pray about it, but don't fall away from your faith and don't turn your back on God, no matter what. Continue to move forward with Him. Continue to walk with Jesus daily. And don't waste your time trying to be religious and holy. Don't, don't do it. Don't get swept up in it. Walk with Jesus and staying true to the faith. That's the, ba that's the basics. That's where we start, right? Every day. And then the rest just follows. So, okay, I'm going to quit. We are about 30 minutes in so hi Wanda is that Wanda good morning hi I'm gonna touch the screen um hope I didn't miss anybody I hope this blessed you I hope something in the word has spoken to you today that you can take uh, and apply it to whatever you're going on each of us have something in our life that's going on immediately needs attention and um first we go to the father right and we start there and Lord what do we do what do we do now father that's all I can say sometimes. What do we do now? Um, so I'm going to pray us out. I'm going to get off here. I want to thank you guys for coming on. And um, what are we going to do tomorrow? Chapter 5. Probably not the whole chapter. I like splitting them up. I like that. So we may do that again. I don't know. It's long. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this encouraging word today. Um, Father, even though I've, I've read your word, I, there are things, Lord, that you've spoken today that really I just needed it so father I just pray that we take hold of this today and that today we do not waste our time on meaningless effort um, father that we don't get carried away in other doctrines but father we listen to you and what you're speaking into our heart Father, you continue to teach us by your, your Holy Spirit, Father, on how to walk with you, how to communicate with you, how to worship you, all these things, Father. I couldn't imagine my life without you. 
You've made my life beautiful, Father, and fulfilling with purpose. You've given me a hope and a bright future. And I thank you for that. So I pray, Father, that you walk with us all today. And that you let your presence be known in a mighty way. So continue to speak, Lord, to your children and direct us in a way we should go, Father. And I pray that today we'll keep our focus on, on you and on, on the Lord, on Jesus Christ. And I praise you and I thank you. And it's his, his name I come to you. Amen. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Where am I supposed to be looking at? Right there. Okay. Uh -huh. See you tomorrow.